The Doctor was now well established as a Black Country GP and a member of Stourbridge Golf Club since 1926, a course he loved for its Heathland feel. Through his medical connections, he was introduced by Henry Plant, fellow GP, to Dorothy Hillman, the daughter of a successful businessman. They fell in love and were married in April 1930. The wedding was a grand affair. They were married at the Oratory Church in Edgbaston, Birmingham. The local paper, the Dudley Chronicle, a broadsheet, dedicated two columns and two pictures to the ceremony. They reported, rarely had the oratory seen such a radiant bride. Several busloads of workers from Mr Hillman's firm came to see his daughter married. There was a big crowd outside the church and no vacant pews inside. The bride and groom exited the church along a red carpet with 60 employees from the firm of Douglas and Sons holding golf clubs aloft to form a guard of honour. Hillman's was a manufacturer of leather goods. Mr Hillman, who was at one time the mayor of Dudley, also had an interest in Douglas and Sons. They also manufactured leather goods, including golf bags. Interestingly, they also made sporting goods, including golf clubs, under the brand Rexalite. This may well explain why 60 of their employees were at the wedding, as it is likely there would have been some sporting connection with the doctor. 1930 is where we started this story. It was a special year for the doctor's great friend, Bobby Jones, the year of the one and only golfing Grand Slam. The second leg of the slam was the Open Championship. That year held at Hoy Lake Golf Club. The final day, a Friday, the competitors played 36 holes. Jones was known to have lost between 12 and 18 pounds of weight in a week of top tournament golf. He appeared serene on the course, but he battled to keep his nerves and stomach condition under control. So 36 holes of golf that day, whatever the outcome, would have mentally and physically been very draining for him. Despite this, his friendship with the doctor was so strong that he drove himself, probably a three to four hour journey, to Blackwell Golf Club, Worcestershire, the following day. He had arranged to partner the doctor in an exhibition match against two local leading players of the day, Stanley Lunt from Moseley Golf Club and Eric Fidian, also a member at Stourbridge Golf Club. Jones and Tweddle won three and two. That year, when Bobby Jones completed his Grand Slam at the age of just 28, he retired from tournament golf. He knew he couldn't keep putting his body and mind through enormous stress. It is amazing to think that this amateur golfer between the years of 1922 and 1930 played in every US Open Championship, nine events in total, against the top professionals of the day and recorded four wins, four runner-up places and an 11th place. In the modern game, those runner results on their own would probably win a professional today over 10 million US dollars of prize money. Jones didn't receive a cent from any of them. While the trip to Blackwell, a top Midlands venue, was no doubt about friendship, it also provided Jones with some inspiration. After he retired, he settled into his family law practice. However, his involvement with sport and golf was far from over. He purchased in his native state of Georgia a piece of land, an old fruit farm, and constructed, along with his friend Clifford Roberts and the golf architect Alistair McKenzie, one of the most famous courses in the world, the Augusta National. It opened in 1933, and in 1934, Jones organized an annual event for the top players of the time. That event, the Masters, is now the first major of the golfing year and the start of the season proper for most golfers. It is believed that the 13th hole at Blackwell, a tricky par three over water with a sloping green, well protected by bunkers, was Jones's inspiration for the world famous 12th par three hole. Part of the stretch of golf known as Amen Corner for its destructive capability on any golfer's card. There are a couple of passenger shipping records showing that the Tweddles sailed the Atlantic in the early 1930s. Likely this was to visit the Joneses family, such was their friendship. However, there is one shipping record that does not exist, and that is for the year 1934. Family tradition has it that Bobby Jones invited the Doctor to play in the inaugural Masters event. The Doctor declined because he was too busy looking after his patients at the time. A noble response and nothing less than would have been expected from him. However, amongst his golfing grandsons there was a twinge of disappointment about this. All the players in that 1934 event were given life honorary membership of Augusta National. Further, they were allowed to pass this on to future generations. That's an ouch. 
Please join us for part four of Dr. Tweddle, Against All the Odds. Please feel free to like this video or subscribe to our YouTube channel Black Star Golf to receive further features or tips throughout 2022.